In this section, we will discuss juxtaglomerular apparatus. Juxtaglomerular apparatus is a specialized organ situated near the glomerulus of each nephron. Juxta means near, and glomerular indicates for glomerulus. Moving towards the structure of the juxtaglomerular apparatus. Juxtaglomerular apparatus is formed by three different structures. Let's name them. Macula densa, extraglomerular mesangial cells, and juxtaglomerular cells. Macula densa is the end portion of thick ascending segment. Before it opens into distal convoluted tubule, it is situated between afferent and efferent arterioles of the same nephron. It is very close to afferent arteriole. Macula densa is formed by tightly packed cuboidal epithelial cells. Extraglomerular mesangial cells are situated in the triangular region, bound by afferent arteriole, efferent arteriole, and macula densa. These cells are also called agranular cells, lessa cells, or gormati cells. Besides extraglomerular mesangial cells, there is another type of mesangial cells situated in between glomerular capillaries, called glomerular mesangial or intraglomerular mesangial cells. Glomerular mesangial cells support the glomerular capillary loops by surrounding the capillaries in the form of a cellular network. These cells play an important role in regulating the glomerular filtration by their contractile property. Glomerular mesangial cells are phagocytic in nature. These cells also secrete glomerular interstitial matrix, prostaglandins, and cytokines. Juxtaglomerular cells are specialized smooth muscle cells. Situated in the wall of afferent arteriole, just before it enters the Bowman capsule. These smooth muscle cells are mostly present in tunica media and tunica adventitia of the wall of the afferent arteriole. Juxtaglomerular cells are also called granular cells because of the presence of secretary granules in their cytoplasm. Polar cushion or pulcus in juxtaglomerular cells form a thick cuff called polar cushion or pulcissin around the afferent arteriole before it enters the Bowman capsule. Now moving towards function of juxtaglomerular apparatus. Primary function of juxtaglomerular apparatus is the secretion of hormones. It also regulates the glomerular blood flow and glomerular filtration rate. Now, which hormones are secreted by Juxtaglomerular apparatus. Juxtaglomerular apparatus secretes two hormones, renin and prostaglandin. Juxtaglomerular cells secrete renin. Renin is a peptide with 340 amino acids. Along with angiotensins, renin forms the renin angiotensin system, which is a hormone system that plays an important role in the maintenance of blood pressure. Now let's discuss the stimulants for renin secretion. Secretion of renin is stimulated by four factors. First is fall in arterial blood pressure. Second is reduction in the extracellular fluid volume. Third is increased sympathetic activity. And fourth factor is decreased load of sodium and chloride in macula densa. Second hormone is prostaglandin. Extraglomerular mesangial cells of juxtaglomerular apparatus secrete prostaglandin. Prostaglandin is also secreted by interstitial cells of medulla called type 1 medullary interstitial cells. Other substances are also secreted. Now let's discuss other substances that are also secreted. Extraglomerular mesangial cells of juxtaglomerular apparatus secrete cytokines like interleukin-2 and tumor necrosis factor and macula densa secretes thromboxane, a 2. 
Remember that macula densa of juxtaglomerular apparatus plays an important role in the feedback mechanism, called as tubuloglomerular feedback mechanism, which regulates the renal blood flow and glomerular filtration rate. This will be explained later in this video. Now let's discuss the renin-angiotensin system. In plasma, there is specific plasma protein called angiotensinogen or renin substrate. Do the stimulants that are already being discussed. From juxtamedullary apparatus, renin is released into the blood. It acts on a specific plasma protein called angiotensinogen or renin substrate. It is the alpha-2 globulin. By the activity of renin, the angiotensinogen is converted into a decapeptide called angiotensin-1. Angiotensin-1 is converted into angiotensin-2, which is an octopeptide. By the activity of angiotensin-converting enzyme secreted from lungs, most of the conversion of angiotensin-1 into angiotensin-2 takes place in lungs. Angiotensin-2 has a short half-life of about one to two minutes. Then it is rapidly degraded into a heptapeptide called angiotensin-3 by angiotensinases, which are present in red blood cells and vascular beds in many tissues. Angiotensin-3 is converted into angiotensin-4, which is a hexapeptide. Now, what are the actions of angiotensins? So let's discuss them. Angiotensin-1 is physiologically inactive and serves only as the precursor of angiotensin-2. Angiotensin-3 increases the blood pressure and stimulates aldosterone secretion from adrenal cortex. It has 100% adrenocortical stimulating activity and 40% vasopressor activity of angiotensin-3. Angiotensin-4 also has adrenocortical stimulating and vasopressor activities. Now let's discuss the role of angiotensin-2 in detail. Angiotensin-2 is the most active form. Let's discuss its actions on various organs in detail. On blood vessels, Angiotensin II increases arterial blood pressure by directly acting on the blood vessels and causing vasoconstriction. It is a potent constrictor of arterioles. Earlier, when its other actions were not found, it was called hypertensin. It increases blood pressure indirectly by increasing the release of noradrenaline from postganglionic sympathetic fibers. Noradrenaline is a general vasoconstrictor. On adrenal cortex, it stimulates zona glomerulosa of adrenal cortex to secrete aldosterone. Aldosterone acts on renal tubules and increases retention of sodium, which is also responsible for elevation of blood pressure. Now let's discuss its action on kidney. Angiotensin II regulates glomerular filtration rate by two ways. It constricts the efferent arteriole, which causes decrease in filtration after an initial increase. Other way is that it contracts the glomerular mesangial cells, leading to decrease in surface area of glomerular capillaries and filtration. Angiotensin II increases sodium reabsorption from renal tubules. This action is more predominant on proximal tubules. On brain, angiotensin II inhibits the baroreceptor reflex and thereby indirectly increases the blood pressure. Baroreceptor reflex is responsible for decreasing the blood pressure. Other effect is that it increases water intake by stimulating the thirst center. Thirdly, it increases the secretion of corticotropin-releasing hormone from hypothalamus. Corticotropin-releasing hormone in turn increases secretion of adrenocorticotropic hormone 
from pituitary. Fourth effect is that it increases secretion of antidiuretic hormone from hypothalamus. Other actions are that in heart, angiotensin II acts as a growth factor and it is thought to cause muscular hypertrophy and cardiac enlargement. This was all about this section. In our next section, we will talk about the renal circulation.